This is Pete Feenstra on Sunday the 24th of July, talking to Sonia Christina and the amazing violinist Mr. Paul Sack. <laughs> Here live at high voltage. I'm kind of looking amazed because it's the year 2011 and we're talking about curved air. Yay! Do you feel kind of amazed by that? <laughs> I, yes, I, I am. I'm amazed by it. When, I, when we first started doing it in 2008, again, it was after quite a long gap. You know, you just yeah. have to think, you know, I wouldn't have thought, you know, when I was 20-something that, you know, when I was like 60-something, or then when I was 50-something, nearly 60-something then, that I, that I would be giving it all that, you know, like, like and, you, and you were certainly giving it all that today, yeah, on the prog rock stage, I mean, that was the absolute perfect well, place for the band, wasn't it? Yeah, we were a very, very good festival there. We, we the, the, the band, the band loves a big stage and a big audience and, and, and they can just sort of really make the music fly, which is what festival audiences need. And was that the focus? Flying music. Was that the focus that, that you kind of went after when the band came back to play festivals? Like interviewing you. Yeah. But yeah, was that what you did? I'm I mean, interviewing you now. Yeah, there we are. <laughs> but festivals, was that what you had in mind? You played the Isle of Wight Festival, of course? Yeah, I mean, I, I that was the That was a comeback. Yeah. Well, it's, it is a good way to play to lots of people all in, all in one place. Yeah. yeah. Without having to hire the kind of you know, the O2. Okay. And what we should tell people who haven't been lucky enough to see the band later, the reason we're talking to Paul as well is, of course, you're filling in for Daryl Way, yep. superb. Thank you. The young man went to the uh, Hootie Manuan School of Violin <laughs> playing and got thrown out at the age of 10. <laughs> now that is some rock and roll. He was. And uh, he, but he learnt he learnt his chops. He was doing such naughty stuff. He was too young to be doing that naughty stuff. He learnt his chops and to, and of course you played together before. Yes, we. The yeah, acid folk thing you did. What was that? Tell everybody about that. In 1989, I discovered that there was this new resurgence of acoustic music happening in the Troubadour Club in Earl's Court, where yeah. I had history because in 1967 I had run a club there right. on a on a on a Wednesday night. This was also on a Wednesday night. It was all terribly serendipitous. And this guy, Ronnie Harris, was running it. And so I, I started writing material for filming it there. And then um, I needed a, a, to add violin. And I, I worked with a guy that um, called Julian Jackson, who I stole from Daryl's quartet. Right. But then, then Roddy... Is he classical player? He was classical yeah, player. Yeah. But then Roddy Harris stole him from me. Right. So then I needed to find a replacement really quickly. And then this friend of mine said, oh, I've seen this wonderful violin player, and I've got his number. So I called up Paul. And here he is. I said, said do you fancy coming and doing some gigs with me? And he, he came down and tried uh, and, to learn my do you think? Do you think because you became involved in that kind of counterculture, acid folk kind of stuff, and, and you kept your hand in, so to speak, in all those years. Whereas a lot of people from the early 70s, rock bands like you, stopped or got rich or disappeared or died. Do you think because you kept that connection going, that it was so much easier to come back with curve there now? That was a good question. <laughs> well, yeah, I. I, 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 I I dropped out of music for a little while when my children were kind of going from you know, late yeah. childhood in through their teens. Yeah. And also I wanted to be a hands-on mum because with my oldest son, I was away with curved air all the time. Yeah. Poor little thing. You know, I, I, and he only I, saw me in gaps in the tour. I have to ask you the horrible question, but I'm going to ask you anyway. I mean, my you granddaughter were, you over were, there. You were, no, no, no. I talk to my granddaughter. I will. <laughs> but you were, you were a serious, serious star with curved air. They were huge. And of course, your partner, Stuart Copeland, and then his career took off. Was that a part in you actually taking time out from the music? Um, no, it was coincidental. But, I mean, he, 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 the code air broke up, he did his thing, I did my thing. Of course he and, was. And, and, his, and, 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 and then, and then um, you know, his, you know, he, he sort of puttered along, we did all the kind of little pub gigs and things like that. And, did, went to, went to America and, and then all of a sudden the bush, you know, his career took off and it got much, much, much bigger even than Curved Air. You know? and Which that, was big enough. And, the, and that was kind of exciting to be... In the world. Yes, yes, to be there and to, you know, yeah. and, and to go out to sort of, you know, wives and girlfriends with privileges and pri privileges yeah. when we're allowed to yeah, yeah, yeah. go there and have holidays and go to hotels and swimming pools and, 
and do all that stuff. In those days, absolutely. You know, and, and go back helicopter to gigs and, you know, all this sort of stuff. So, I mean, a rock wife as well as Oh, a rock there star. we are, yeah, I thought we'd bring that one. And taking a quantum jump to now, of course, Paul's in the band. I mean, do you play the same parts that Dow all played, or do you bring your own? Like today, for example, you were really. Bit of both. Yeah, you were fantastic. A different sort of player. Yeah. Do you want to explain how you are? There's the, the there's lines that have to be yeah. there. They're integral yeah, part, part of the arrangement. Part of the arrangement. Yeah. 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 But, uh, but I find space to be my usual. Yeah. The vase itself. So, yeah. As you Off would. on one. The vase is in Vivaldi. <laughs> <you know. laughs> and I must say, when you play Vivaldi today, the crowd went crazy. It was really a great, great night. It was about 100 degrees when you played as well. Oh, yeah, you, well you were in the shape. That's the off to Daryl. It's, it's, it's a privilege to be playing it. And, and Sonia, when the band reformed, Francis didn't want to be part of it. What, what was the difference? You said you didn't share the same vision well, as you yeah, had of the band. We, we, all, we all sort of met together and started planning it. Yeah. But he and Daryl, practically from the moment that they split up after Phantasmagoria, they had completely different musical agendas. I mean, Daryl. Daryl is very precise, you know, he's got the classical route and, yeah. he, and he likes to have complete control over what he does, you know, he, he, and, and, and he's a perfectionist, total perfectionist, whereas Francis, so over the years, I mean, he, he does do, you know, he, he, he does um, respect all the great composers and, and, and he plays, and presumably he plays Bach and, and oh, he, oh, the yeah. half school recitals, yeah. he must play them very precisely. Yeah. But as far as his own music is concerned, he he likes to go out there and, and jam and right. improvise. And Daryl just doesn't jam. He so does he a, plays no, solos and he that. and he takes it, you know, he's expressive with his solos. Yeah. But you know, just jamming is, 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 is his worst nightmare. It's far too chaotic. But on that point, this is the fifth incarnation of, of uh Code Air, and you have got Paul in the band and that, as we saw today in this this great performance that you put on today at the high voltage you you jammed. I mean, you actually did stretch out. You know, you did stretch out. And, uh, I forgot the keyboard player's name. I'm so sorry. Robert, Robert Norton. Robert Norton. I mean, fantastic chops. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, it, it's. Do you, do you find it weird, or, or are you happy with the fact that you know you can go to a festival like this and essentially play prog rock again? Because for many years, prog rock was a no-no. And suddenly, here we are with a festival where you've got five big names. Festival, they would all be called prog rock. Well, I think just as, as punk was the antidote to, to prog, yeah, I think, I think, I think that prog, sort of progressive music, or, you know, yeah, progressive music, the prog, and it, 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 it can be anything, it's a mixture of stuff, but it, 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 it requires high musicianship. I think it's the antidote to the X Factor generation. Well, it is now, it's, it's a great You know, just proper playing, you know, and, and even, you know, there's lots of very, very good yeah. bands you know, with, with, um, Charismatic identities, you know, yeah. musically and everything, but you know, you need really, really, you know, virtuoso playing to be in a, in, in a band like this. Absolutely. One final question, because we're running out of time here. You, you've got a parallel career with Mask. It's, it's relative, yeah. of course. So we could <laughs> carry this on for hours with the camera running. But uh, you're in you're in another project with Martin. Mar Ayers. Marvin. Marvin. Sorry, Marvin. Marvin with a V. Make it out. Uh, called Mask. Yes. Which is a kind of ambient kind of thing. Yeah. How, how do you find, how do you manage to split the time between that, because you're writing a lot of stuff for that, and Code Dare and the future of Code Dare? How are you going to balance that? Well, we. Um, it's good. Huh? It's when, when I started, when we, when we got together with, with um, Code Dare, it was just after we had finished the. the Second part, Mask album, yeah. Technopia. Technopia, and I yeah. think Marvin and I decided that um, we would wait before doing the, the next Mask thing because we wanted to do really properly. We wanted yeah. to be really beautiful, visual, theatrical yeah, yes. experience, yeah. and we would just he he would um, build he would he would do some projects of his own, do small recording, small production from other people, and and I would. You know, so we're building up our profiles. Yeah, so yeah, so yeah. He's, he's building up his profile, and, and it kind of cross pollinates because he's, he's doing it. He's out doing some interviews for some shows of his own at the moment. Okay. And you know, he talks about the work that we do together, and, and, I, and, I, and I mentioned it too. So. And being as we're here at this great rock festival today, the, 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 the closing question is obviously going to be: Have we got any more Joe Dare dates? 
Yeah, so we're in October and we've, we've got another festival, we're doing Rhythm Festival. Oh yeah, very good, that's at the end of August. Yeah, yeah. and we're doing, um, Paul and Robert and I are doing a, uh, a sort of an, a, 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 an evening of, of more acoustic songs, so we're doing a, more of the acid food. So we're going back and to that, yeah. And then, then we might be doing some more, um, we're, we're going to work on some intimate yeah. evening with Sonia and Christina uh, things with, 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 with music from all through my history. Third yeah. final question. <laughs> Honestly, it is. You re recorded Elfin Boy and Melinda. With Marvin? Yeah, on Reborn. Yeah. Uh, was that, what was the reason for that? Was that because you could bring new instrumental, new uh, colours to it that you couldn't previously do it because now there's more instrumentation in that? Or was it to do with the arrangements, the production, where you felt you didn't really like the originals? Well, Dan was re doing his own versions of everything, pretty much. Right. Of all his, you know, the, all his music. Um, and, and it was also a way of re literally revisiting the, the material for Florian and Daryl yes. and myself. To, to prepare for the tour, yeah. but um, so Daryl did all his all those songs in his studio, and Marvin and I, because we were working together anyway. Yeah. Um, I, I I played the um, the song with guitar, and then Marvin reinvented with with reference to what had gone before. Right. He he, he reinvented the the um, the songs, so, so that was you know I was very pleased with those as, as new versions of yeah. you know, which, no, which were great. relevant to what to to yeah. to. Kind of updated the whole thing, yeah. Anyway, here we are, we've got to go. This has been Pete Feast and talking to Paul Satch. It's been an absolute pleasure. It was a fantastic gig, by the way. Everybody yeah, this is. Come and see them on the road. Thanks, Sonia. Pleasure having you here. Curvedair.com, Facebook, Curvedair, Reverb Nation, Curvedair. And you can see this on Get Ready internet, to Rock. Internet, internet. Dot com. That's net. That's net.